Welcome to the Polly Podcast, where the conversations are real and raw, where we say what we feel and we feel what we say. We feel what we say. And joining us tonight is one of the characters, characters Ooh. of NRL, an ex Parramatta, ex Penrith, and everyone will remember him for ex MMT, Haka Leader, Etu Aiseli. Etu Ate! Thank you, thank you, boys. You know, good to be here. You know, I've only driven 12 hours to get here, but you know, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's a start. You know, it's a good start. So you make sure you have heaps of coffee after this. Eh? <laughs> uh, I think um, everyone everyone should know that we've known Etu for a long, long time. Mm, too long, sometimes. Yeah. And every every time you meet him, he's infectious, you know, like oh, yeah. straight away, he's, it makes you laugh. He doesn't have to have to say anything. It's just his facials. <laughs> Like uh, rocking up to a 8pm kickoff with sunglasses on right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Straight out of Watonga <laughs> in the bush <laughs> yeah. Into the big city yeah. Uh, yeah. Five hour drive and straight into the studio yeah. 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 Malo yeah. etu yeah. No worries guys, you know when you drive down here from uh, Obi Watonga It's still windy, you know So my eyes get a little bit dusty, you know <laughs> 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 you didn't expect that one from me, eh? Yeah, don't worry, yeah. don't worry. I'll tell another one. Yeah. <laughs> another one after, after. So Etu's story is Etu's story's quite unique because he actually came from Tonga. Give us a bit. Where, where about, where did you grow up? Tonga. Oh. Oh. Tell us a bit about the, the early days of Etuate. Yeah. Yeah. I was born in Malfanga, eh? Mm. I know there's no hospital there, but sorry, in Viola. This hospital is in... Where? Port Moresby? That's my other... I think they say that I'm um, part, but it's, I think they're lying. Yeah. Half Justin yeah. Oram. Hey, yeah. Brother. So Tonga, little kid born there. He went to school there. Yeah, went to school there, eh? Do you remember much of Tonga Etu before you came? Oh, yeah, I remember heaps, eh? Yeah. Because... Uh, at what age did you? Where, you came to New Zealand first, 11, huh? Eh? I left when I was eleven. Yeah. Um, so I pretty much, I pretty much remember everything at primary school and stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Fun, fun fact. You went to school with someone over there too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a, there was a kid there come there to the to our school, and he told me later. I met him later in life. <laughs> uh, his name was Feletti, eh? You two yeah. went to school together yeah, yeah. in Tonga. Yeah. How funny is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and he tried to tell me, remember this story, yeah? Mm. He was telling me, hey, Eto, did you go to school? And, you know, it was, you know, the fence was slow. We played rugby with the um, with a bottle, you know, with the stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I said, oh, you're the kid that I smash every time. You want that palangi kid to come? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he couldn't speak. He, uh, he couldn't speak tongue. So he yeah, was yeah, smashing yeah. because he didn't understand what we yeah, say. Yeah. Eh? So ah, long, yeah. long so story. That's how I know. Yeah. Eh? Long story short, I spent uh, half a year or a year in Tonga, and in about year two or three or something like that, yeah, and. Yeah. Um, I remember some of the things about the schooling there, and then mm. I mentioned about playing touch footy at uh, recess, lunch, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we, we recalled the same story. And um, we went back to Tonga to play for Tonga, and we actually, um, grandparents' when, house is across the road from this guy's family. Uh, man, what a coincidence, eh? Mm, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had to teach him a few lessons, eh? <laughs> Oh man! So eleven up until you were eleven, yeah. Mm. So you lived in, uh, grew up in Pedia, mm, mm. and um, shout out to all the Pedia boys. Yo, you went to school uh, up before all, or? Got it. I was supposed to go there, but I didn't pass my test. So <laughs> <laughs> it's in Tonga, eh? In Tonga, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, lucky in Tonga, in Tonga. So before you go from primary school, you gotta do an exam, eh? It's like here when you go for the exam to go to private school. No, no. So I don't know if you have it here. Like, so if you form here, yeah. you got to, I don't know, they have it in New Zealand now. You got to pass the test to go to 6-4. Oh, Maybe okay. they didn't do that. They didn't do that here. So what Minimum. if you don't pass so and you, you repeat? You repeat. Yeah. Eh? And, and it's, it's funny because like some guys in Tonga, eh? They will be like 15 years old and still, <laughs> still in uh, primary school, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 um, yeah. And that's a, that's a true story, eh? Yeah. And then, but you told me that you were too smart in Tonga. That's why they sent you to New Zealand. 
Yeah. Yo, yeah. yeah, I think that, that was part of it. I think they, they knew I was going to be the 16 year old and I'll be still the <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the first one there, 16, 17, maybe. <laughs> finish, finish my high school in uh, primary school, I think, otherwise, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was, was just lucky that, you know, I got an opportunity to go overseas. And, um, but growing up in, in Tonga, that was, was pretty funny, you know, like yeah. um, going to school, like, we walk to school probably like 20 minutes to get to school and stuff. Um, us guys going up, there's not much to eat and stuff, right? Yeah. So when we get to school, we got to make friends with the rich kids, yeah? <laughs> so, so, but that's, that's, that's true, true stories. Like, it happens all the time. So yeah. we, when we get to school, eh, I always look for the rich kid. Eh? Oh, yeah, this guy's the man. So every lunchtime, eh, lunchtime hey, we go lunch. Yeah, yeah. Follow him, we get lunch. So I think I did that for like two good years. Um, but that's just how we grew up in Tonga, you know, you got to actually find all the, yeah. you know, um, and in, I love my rugby, I remember I used to love rugby there, I hated school, I didn't want to go to school, but I knew I was good at, I just, I was good at sports, um, and I used to get a hiding every, every Friday, uh, Monday, right, so every Friday is all the sports, yeah. all the rugby happening in Tonga, right? the high school, it is up before all, right, yeah. so I used to follow the up before all team, right? I knew I'm going to come back the next day, uh, next, on Monday, get a hiding, <laughs> Far talks honest. Every morning, come back, hands up, and the principal was like, "Got you, man." Well, because you went to up before instead yeah, of going to primary. That, no, yeah, they know that I work school, right? <laughs> no, I know it. Yeah, even my my parents they, they didn't know. Um, my mom didn't know. So it's growing up in Tonga is very dangerous. That's cool, man. Very. So you play any uh, organized rugby or just in the parks or in Tonga in the early days? Yeah, yeah. In, in Tonga, I think we league was just start started to come in. It's all rugby, huh? Mm, it's all rugby. So I remember playing. Uh, I did play um, union there, and we did play like. So we go play other state, like is it state or villages, villages. from other other part of town that. Um, yeah, I think I'm lucky that one of my uncles was the selector. <laughs> Otherwise. <laughs> I remember that day I was disappointed because like I was I wanted to make the team, yeah. And then they named the team and I was sitting there. I was like, "Fuck, I didn't make it!" Like, then my uncle from the side, "Hey, did they call your name?" He's like, "No, hey, hey, you forgot him." <laughs> <laughs> That's how I made the team. <laughs> no, did they call your name? <laughs> nah, wait there. <laughs> 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 yeah. you know, but wait, was, wait there. <laughs> We'll come back to you, eh? Yeah. Don't tell my story for me, huh? <laughs> Don't I see you, eh? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, little things like that, you know, um, I'm grateful for, you know, like, along the way in, in life, you know, there's there's a little setback like that, you know, then you're used to it yeah. as you come up, um, trying to make it, um, and as you go to New Zealand, all that stuff, you just gotta... Um, Sort of like just hopefully everything works out. So if you're not, you just got to keep going, you know? Yeah. So you end up in New Zealand at 11. Mm. And how did that, how did you go from Tonga to New Zealand? What's the story? So I, I, I was adopted. Yep. Um, so my mom, brother, who I was named after, um, he was living in, in uh, New Zealand at the time. He had no kids. Like, so him and his wife had no kids at all. Um, the... Sorry, that was his second wife. His first wife, he had three girls. And then his second wife, he didn't have any kids. So they wanted uh, children, you know? So, yeah. um, and they asked me, you know, they asked my mom to, to come over. And like I said before about the school, I was lucky they actually took me because I did the exam and I didn't pass it yeah. to go to uh, before college. So, yeah. uh, although, like I said, I would have been there 18 years old. <laughs> was it a culture shock when you went over to New Zealand from Tonga but, when it first started? Mm, yeah, when I went there, I actually, I cried. I actually rang my mom. The sec, the maybe first day, second day, I want to come home. Yeah, it was a. Uh, um, Did you speak hard. English? No, but are you serious, man? <laughs> I'm serious. Like because you born and raised not learning kids till they're eleven, and you didn't go to school too. Yeah, you know what I mean. Ew. How was like? If how you was your English? Tongue, I mean, how it, was your English? Yeah. Yeah, my English, I found it a very hard, the hard way because one day I went to, to school and my first year there, and the dentist. Remember that dentist, eh? She, she must have asked me, do you want to numb your teeth, eh? 
and I must say no, eh? She <laughs> gave me a... <laughs> oh, she gave me the, you know, my back, my back to wisdom, eh? Yeah. She did the, all the feelings, eh? No numbness. Oh, man. Dog, oh, that's how I found out the way of to speak English. The next day, next time I come. Yes. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You know, I yeah. never say no. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's when you learn how to say you yes, So yeah. what, they just did it without nothing? No. And you just felt it? I was crying. Uh, wow. Ah, yeah. docs. You learn you know, fast, you huh? Very yeah. learned how to speak English. Eh? You, you <laughs> learn how to say yes very fast. Yeah. Mm. Did you just pick up the language after a little bit, or did you learn at school? Yeah, no, no, I was all, I was all at school. Yeah, um, I think because at that time there would have been a lot of Tongans and that coming mm. over from Tonga, just fresh, you know, or, uh, or not, not really. really. At that time, it was like it's it, it, it's all Tongans that got, uh, Tongan kids grow, grew up in New, New Zealand. Zealand. Oh, yeah. So you get these kids that, but in, to- in New Zealand it's pretty good because like the culture is still pretty yeah. strong. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you get these kids here still be speak uh, Tongan, Tongan in, yeah. in, in at home. Real good Tongan too. Yeah, yeah. So there was, there was one kid there as far, like, he was good to me. Because he, every time I say something wrong, he'll correct me. Yeah? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. So he was good. Uh, I followed him for ages, even to I finished from the middle, uh, it was like middle school in, in New Zealand. Yeah. Eh? So he must have been rich as well, that's why he followed me. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> 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 what part of New Zealand did you move to? I was in uh, South Auckland in Otara, eh? Um, yeah. So I was, I was in Otara. It was, uh, it, it's like all the kids, like it's all like islanders. Like most of the kids are yeah. all islanders. Um, That's a, like a, a hardworking sort of area, isn't it? Mm. Like tough, tough growing up. Tough and they steal a lot. And um, yeah, you have your shoes outside their house, he's gone the next day. Hmm? <laughs> like that. Tough, yeah. you know? It's... Yeah. it's yeah. Uh, As you were growing up there, was it tough to sort of not head down that way? Uh, or did their family sort of keep you sheltered yeah. from that sort of thing? No, I um, I don't know because because uh, I seen all the kids at my age were smoking. They actually were drinking as well. Yeah. Like we used to go like some parts uh, by the creek and they used to smoke all the time. And they asked me, you're like, but because when I left home, I seen how hard it was for my mom because my mom's single mom too. Yeah. Um, raising all three of us at the time. And when I left, I was like, um, I made a, it was like a promise. Eh? Like, I'm just going to stick to, like, I knew I was good at sports. Yeah. That's one thing I knew. I was, I was fast. Uh, I didn't know. I was just, I wanted to play rugby. Um, and, and I didn't want to do anything bad. So, because I knew if I could help, my family is, the, that's the only way I could do. Because I wasn't good at school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that was the only way I could actually get up from these kids. And you, man, at that age, and he understood that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, but, but it was a, it was a. <clears throat> so you talk about giving, you know, your mum and family and dying a better life. Mm. But it, was there like consequence too? Like you, if you're naughty, you're gonna, you know, they send you back to Tonga or anything like that. Uh, or was it more just the drive to try and do good? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, like, like I said. Uh, because I see my mom working there, I just, I went back, I went, I, I go there and I just see all the kids. Are, and plus I had no visa too. Like I knew I'm not a citizen yet. Mm, so mm. I didn't want to do anything that actually muck it up. Muck there. That actually I can get sent back home or or not, can't go to school and stuff like that. I yeah. try not to um, get suspended or anything like that. But yeah. So it was, it was pretty hard. I knew that. I knew, I knew like, what I was good at, not mm. at school. I wasn't good at school. Or like, I could be good if I tried, yeah, but yeah, I knew yeah. I was not. So, <clears throat> so you made it's clear. You made that decision. You want to mm. do good. You want to provide. So you knew sport was what it was going to be, huh? Mm. So, obviously, you're very young. It's hard for anyone, a twelve-year-old, eleven-year-old, to make a decision. I'm going to make a good life for my family. Mm. So what? what was there anything you did or was there any steps you took to, to try and make it happen? Yeah. Uh, I just, because uh, when I first got to New, Ze- New Zealand, like, um, I was good at in athletics. Athletics, I was, I was probably the fastest at the whole school, um, uh, even in rugby. Um, 
um, you know, when we got, I didn't actually, I wasn't allowed to play rugby. So I didn't play rugby from 12 to 16, outside of school. Oh, from who? Yeah, or just from my the family. family. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so it was Why like. Why is that? There any reason? Well, my, my, so my, my, uh, like, my, my grandma's brothers and that, they were, they were in New Zealand at the time. They're pretty big on work. Oh, okay. They didn't believe in sports. So um, they said, look, if you're not good at school, you go work in the factory. Yeah. Um, if you get injured playing rugby, you can't work. That was their mentality back then. Um, they didn't know, yeah. So it was pretty hard trying to play rugby. Um, I remember when coming home. I, I remember when I was about 12, I got picked. There was like, a kid, like every school had a kid from their school got picked to go train with the Auckland Blues. And I remember Xavier Rush used to play. He used to be mm. at five, eight, um, number eight, number for, eight yeah. for Auckland Blues. Uh, I think, I, I don't know, I can't remember if they were. Peter Latini he was playing for them then. But those guys were, you know, I used to watch them on TV and stuff. And then um, I got the letter to go, you know, how to, to for parents to mm. sign. I knew they're not going to let me go. I took it home. They said no. And, you know, like, fuck, it's massive for me. Mm. See, they don't know that. See, for them, it's like, nah. At that age, too, it's like 12, 13. They, they both think, that I don't know what I want to do. I want to be, you know. Mm. Um, but I think most kids, they... they some kids actually know what they want to be, you know. At, at that age, I actually knew uh, what I was good at. Um, but then I went to school and changed the name, eh? Changed it, uh, yes to, uh, no to yes. And then um, the bus came in, I went, fuck, got home, eh? <laughs> got home, the great uncle, he had a piece of uh, hose, eh? Oh. The hose is only short to, oh yeah, oh, eh? Next day, I went home to school with the kids, hey, what happened to your leg? But I didn't say anything because, you know, for, yeah. my dad didn't realise I got a hiding just because I went to training with the Auckland Blues, you know. You know, just things like that I had to do. Um, I had to, I, I was actually, I remember running. Every day I used to do running around the blocks. Yeah. And, you know, I remember my friends in there too, you know, they used to, they just say, like, come down and just chill or play with them and do, like, smoking. Because mm. they were all smoking there, like, and I was just run out, I didn't care. Yeah. But I think the boys are glad that I actually didn't listen to them, man. Like later on in life, they're like, fuck, lucky you didn't, you didn't listen and, and do what we did because, um, you know, you actually went and made This is after you said about the hiding, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, unfortunately, um, these days, that sort of stuff still happens, you know? Dads, uncles, whatever, still giving kids hidings. You're one, <clears throat> you got four boys now. Mm. What, what do you think changed for you, like, or what's changed for you, like, in the way you treat your boys if that sort of thing happened? Like, what have you learnt from that lesson? Yeah, so what, what I learned, probably the biggest is, like, let, like try to understand your kids um, before you actually um, force them to do something, you know what I mean? Um, all my boys, are, they're all different. Um, so I just let them do what they want to do. I, I um, and the, the, like the biggest uh, lesson I learned is that um, the, the reason why I made it out um, it was just because of me. Like I did it myself, you know. Like to to where I am, I actually went out there and did all. The, now I, at least I can help my kids get mm. to where where they want to be in life. And if that's bloody playing guitar, why not? Like you know. Mm. Um, and a lot of people ask me like. Is your boys plays right? Be honest, like, there's only two of them that interested. The other ones, they they actually got us get a surprise because they just think they're gonna be rugby players automatically. Yeah, yeah. because because yeah. I play. I said no, nah. and that's the thing I changed. <clears throat> you know, with my with my boys is that I just let them do what they want to do. Um, I don't I don't expect them to be good. At, you know. I think I'll just if if they if they want to play rugby, I'll probably just train them to play rugby. I just don't like some of the, the stuff that they do is like they train and um, they don't want to train, but they want to play rugby, you know what I mean? For mm. fun. It's all right for fun, but like what happens if they get hurt? Because yeah. they're, you know, they, they're not fit enough and stuff like that. So yeah. that's the only thing I'll do. That's um, pretty powerful, man. Yeah, man. I think it, <clears throat> for me, you know, like Eddie said, I've known you a long time. 
have to say that, man, you're one of the best fathers I've ever met. So big rap to you, mate. You've, le- you've learned a lot of lessons. You've done it the hard way, done it by yourself, like you said. Yeah. And, I, I just, man, I think both of us, we take it, our hats off to you, mate. You're doing a really good job so far. Your boys are getting big now, yeah. and uh, you better be careful, otherwise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mate. No, no. You might, uh, if one of them want to be a boxer, yeah. you yeah. might be a punching bag soon, mate. <laughs> yeah. See you. That's uh, all right, man. So, 16, you got picked up playing rugby, uh, league or union in New Zealand, and who were you playing for? Uh, I was playing there for Erdogan Labbit. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> that was Erdogan Labbit, yeah? not Labbit. <laughs> Oh, that who Lepati, yeah? yeah. <laughs> if you don't know Lepati, it's yeah. a lion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, it's a tongue and lion. Yeah. 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 In Tonga, he look at the lion, he say leopard. He say the leopard, he say lion. What's that different, man? Same, same, but different. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so how long did you play there for? Before you made the journey over to Australia? Uh, I played there for two years, I think. Yeah. Well, so under only two years of rugby and yeah, then yeah, rugby. So I play under 16s one year, then the next year I play. And then, yeah, yeah only play two years and then I come here. Oh, that's good. So you hit the shores of Australia mm. and you're picked up by the Dragons. Is that right? I, I, I think I picked them up. <laughs> oh, so you. Yeah, yeah. I, I went there. You went there oh, for a trial. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. so, so you trialled with dragons and then they put you in the, mm. what was it, like Jersey Flag or? Yeah, Jersey Flag. Yeah. So I, I came here because I didn't have a club. Yeah. So I, I came yeah. here and I live with my uncle here in Portney. Eh? Yeah. Port Portney. And I used to run to mascot, play touch footy for the Tongan boys there. Eh? Shout out to the boys. If you see Eddie on the road, <laughs> slap him in the head, please. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so when I first came to Australia, I didn't have a rugby team. So I had three months to actually try and look for a club. Yeah. Um, so I was, play, I was playing touch footy, and one of the, the boys there was um, plays touch with us. He's, he said that there was a guy, he knows he works at um, St. George. Uh, and that's how it went about with um, St. George. And so one night, I didn't know he was watching us playing touch footy, and so he came out of nowhere and... Oh, in the bushes after after playing touch, <laughs> and he said, "Oh, hey, mate, uh, you know you, you, they got a trial that week on on that Sunday." I was like, "Yeah, sweet," because I only had like I think one week left or a couple of days left on my visa. Yeah. So I was like, "Ah, yes, I just need a trial." Eh? So it was an open trial at, at St George. So, um, like I think you already know, like you know how the system works. So every club has all the the, the team. Yeah, all set up, but they always have an open trial just in case there's mm. guys out there. Yeah, because um, they find maybe one or two, one or two, yes, one or two mm. injuries. Yeah. yeah, to fill the spots. Yeah, so that's 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 what happened. So I I turned up those four four t- four four games, I think. Um, and like I said, you know, I, I try coming here, I try make a team because I I've got to go the next week, go back to New Zealand, and I play twenty minutes, I think. First twenty, it was like four twenties, eh? Yeah, first twenty, and then the. Uh, I think it was the the recruit officer eh? for, for the juniors development anyway. Yep. So he pulled me up after 20 minutes and said, mate, you're already in the team. So I just so, went... So they signed you on the spot? Oh, like they didn't sign me. Like they just, he just told me that I'm just, I'm actually in the team. That like They don't have to try anymore. Like yeah. you're actually in the team. Yeah. After 20 minutes? After 20 minutes. Eh? Oh. Wow. Um, but it was pretty... pretty. And pretty, what position were you playing? I was playing wing, eh? Yeah. And how heavy were you? No, I was about same same now. So I was about 95, 90, 94. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so the, the good thing was, uh, you know, it was, um, you know, like those four teams. Like I said, like Eddie said, it was there's only two, three guys that get picked up. Yeah. And for me to make it, but like mm. the guys, like nah, you're coming. Like we actually want you're actually in the team. You're not gonna trial like in the high one trial and yeah. You know, I didn't yeah. understand that here. Yeah. But, um, did the did the kitchen sink come out? Is that why he picked you huh? after the first twenty oh, minutes? The, the frying yeah, pan. Did the frying pan <laughs> come out? <laughs> yeah, I think the frying pan came because like when you play wing, you remember like front rollers in there. He's probably here. Oh, he's probably knee. No, we've seen a few when we yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. Mm, you get the big front rollers sometimes. Uh, they run sideways. Eh? Yeah, they bump the center, bump the half. <laughs> 
But when you come to the wing, eh? Mate. <laughs> Before we go on, explain yeah. the frying pan, oh, Phil. So, uh, mate, it came very early on in um, Etu's time in Australia, mate. He, yeah. he was known for um, this time. Uh, his, his, his English was good at this time. <laughs> yeah. His English was so, good. So, look, it, it, was, it was ill-advised, but there was times where he would get the green light to shoot out of the line from the wing. Four men in. <laughs> four four <laughs> men in. <laughs> And just absolutely clean up any front rower that decided to go sideways. Sideways, yeah. So we, there was word that he used to hide a frying pan in his shoulder the way he used to hit him that hard. <laughs> mate, I've seen yeah. a few uh, get absolutely buckled. Oh, man. Uh, none more than our mate uh, Ryan Bailey in, in England. Oh, man. Oh, the, the Cooper Vuna one was pretty good too. Oh, <laughs> that a, one? There's a few, man. There's a few. <laughs> There's a few. Yeah. We'll, we'll roll something over. Yeah, I had the I had the pleasure actually of defending with the frying pan outside me. Oh, so it was good. So because it ever skipped outside me, I knew the frying pan was covered. Oh. <laughs> you know what? The frying pan was with the ball as well. Yeah. <laughs> with the ball, yeah. except yeah. Um, when he had one of his first trials against Parramatta Eels at Cabramatta. <laughs> oh man, let's let's go on with the St George story. Yeah. So. Um, they said you're not, don't trial anymore. And then when did they, when did it start getting a bit more serious that they had to talk to you and sort of sign you up, sort of thing mm. after a while? Yeah, no, it was, I think it was lucky that um, I went to after the trial. I went to watch a warrior. I think Warriors made the grand final there. Oh, against the Roosters. Yeah, uh, that. Uh, but they played. I don't know. The Bulldogs play something. I think it's the semis or something. But I, I. I, I um, I ran into Sonny Bill. Yeah. Uh, he was playing with me back in New Zealand before I come over to him, man. Yep. Um, yep. And I met his manager and I told him what happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 um, I told him what happened. I'm here now. And, and then that's how we went up about it. And he went to St. George and, you know, and then um, spoke for me and stuff like that. And yeah, and then, and then I ended up signing. Because otherwise, you know, I, I was still learning English then. I probably wouldn't even get to yeah. sign a contract, you know. So I was lucky. So you got signed. Mm. And there's a story going around that after you signed, you went out and bought the biggest subwoofer there was that <laughs> down the road at the shop. <laughs> and you used to come to the train and you could hear yourself like from five five streets away. Is that true? Uh, yeah, part of it is true. <laughs> the subwoofer was pretty big. I think it was bigger than my uh, the boot on my car. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, nah, good, good old story. Yeah. Couldn't I couldn't close the boot because the boombox was too big. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think I don't know if I gave it away or he's following me. I, I don't know what happened to it. Maybe the next Eduardo took it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so th- did you stay there long at the Dragons? Mm, I was there for three years. Eh. Yep. Um, yeah. Playing twenty ones. Yeah. Played. I, I first year I played twenty. I think it was under nineteen. Mm. First year because yeah. I was only eighteen. I think when I first come down. That's I when you met him, mate. 18, were you 17? 18. 17, eh? Tongan birth certificate. Yeah, 21, real, mate. Real certificate or? He was, he was 21, mate. <laughs> He's 21. No, Let's be real. In, in, it's, it's, 21 it's, in Malfunga and uh, 17 in St. George. It's like, it's like my shoe size, eh? So I stand to 13, eh? <laughs> 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 yeah. That's yeah, a good story. Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah, story, yeah, that yeah, one. That's a good one, That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good story about the shoe size. Yeah, don't worry, man. Plenty of stories, man. It was a. That that was Fui was good at that. Yeah, yeah. Huh? you and him same yeah, same. Yeah. Did did you have any friends at uh, the Dragon? Did you make any good friends nah, at no the Dragon? Friends. <laughs> no, during um, those three years. Nah, uh, yeah. I actually, I'll trace the flag side. I still have good friends. I still talk to them. Uh, most of them, um, uh, in, in in for for flag because we played for two years and then I played reserve grade over at, at Dragons too. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to. I actually played reserve grade in the first year too. Like, um, how did you go on the field? Uh, was all right. Yeah. Like I said, it was. I was only been two years. Because um, you're still trying to learn the game. Yeah. That's all, amazing, all I knew. Man. Yeah. All yeah, I knew was. Years. All I knew was a uh, fourth tackle. You got to start dropping back. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, fifth, you got to be right back. Yeah. That's all I knew. And all you got to do is run hard. Um, 
Wow. And, and yeah, that's that. Um, I, you know what? I couldn't put it as simple as as simple as that. I'm still trying to get winger. my wingers to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what you got to do. Just catch the ball and run fast. Yeah. Um, score tries. Huh? Score tries. Yeah. And score tries. And don't get smashed. Yeah. 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 Well, wow. so two years flag. You played cup, and then where next? And then um, I actually got a taste in New Zealand. Eh? Uh, we went to New Zealand and played against the Warriors. Eh? Yeah. On the same year, I think I came here. For the, the Dragons? Year. Oh, yeah. Uh, or the second year. And how was that? Because, uh, you know, your family in New Zealand, obviously against the sport, and then you mm. get an opportunity to fly back and play in front of them. Mm. How was that? No. That was, that was pretty, uh, pretty special. Every time I go back to NZ, man, my whole family travel. Because even when we play Hamilton, they all they all from Auckland, yeah. Yeah. Um, for, they all come in the you know the bus in the the family van. Yeah? Everyone load up and um, mm. come down and watch me. The, it's always special. Um, go back home and play footy there. And you go from Dragons to Para. Yeah. So you signed with Para for how long? I was at Para for six years. Yeah. Really? Mm. Six years, man. So That's why I. The you see, my power. hair is, is losing my hair because <laughs> I've known you that long. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? So you meet up with all of these boys in para. Mm. But I did meet him first before when I played against him in, when he was at Dragons. Yeah, I remember a Jersey flag trial at Cavamata Oval and they talked about this big winger on the oh, – man, he was a sight for sore eyes. And I was played in the halves in the trials. The scrum, first scrum – they send this bloke off the scrum for a hit up. I went, oh my goodness, look at this thing, man. <laughs> he looked at me, come straight at me. Yeah. And then he felt my frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> he went back to the wing, mate. Wait for fourth tackle. <laughs> 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 no, so Parramatta, man. Mm. You moved to Parramatta? Eel, eel. Um, no, no, I was still staying here. Are oh, you travelling, huh? Yeah, I live in Hurstville. Yeah. Hey, um, Mick. Mm. Shout out Mick Mickey We used to get our haircuts Oh Mick Man That guy was a man <laughs> That guy was the man You know what Mick's still waiting for you To pay your bill <laughs> <laughs> He was rich hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. He, he talked to me He look at him He better look at Him he's uh, His account unlimited Mick's, Mick's shop currently <laughs> went under Oh man <laughs> hey, Mick was hey. the best man He's the best you He know, used to look I, after us He go there uh, Get a haircut And he'd take us mate, And it didn't matter Who we brought He'd just take everyone For a feed Yeah, yeah Champion Mick Good fella eh? yeah. But that's what's good About 40s eh? Like You meet good people eh? oh, yeah. um, But this guy Mick he, <laughs> Mick was like <laughs> Probably the same size As this guy man Fit Athletic, yeah. mm. and these guys used to go fishing, fishing, <laughs> fishing together. Yeah. And instead of fishing, they sent me videos <laughs> see who could do the most chin ups on the tree. <laughs> uh, yes. I said, How right. many fish did you catch? He goes, Don't yeah, worry, so I right. did more chin ups than Mick. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's oh, good, good old stories, eh? Good old stories, eh? So you go to Para, mm. meet all these boys. How was it the first year you were there? Uh, it was a bit weird because uh, when I went there, it was a different system, eh? Yeah. So when I was in um, St. George. Were there many Polynesian dudes at St. George at the time? No. Not many, eh? Yep. Uh, I met Wycliffe Balu. Oh, yeah. He was at St. George when I was there. Cliffy. Willie Manu was there. Yeah. He did come in there from the Tigers, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but because I didn't know him, like, I was still, like, from, like, come from under the 20s. Yeah. Um, and I was injured most of the, when I was actually um, reserve grade. Um Training with Zergo sometime and um, yeah, I didn't know them, so I didn't really talk to these island boys. Yeah, um, and then and you come to Para, and how was it? How was <laughs> the change? Oh, it, was, it was crazy because like uh, islanders they everywhere. Made, yeah, <laughs> it, it was a few islanders, but like the vibe in there was different. Yeah, so I I, I came in there and like we we were training first grade. Yeah, and we're like, holy, I'm I'm only trained first grade if we actually got caught up. Gets caught up to go, you know, in St. George. Yeah? But here, yeah, these boys were training with them twice a week. And I was like, yes, this is, uh, this is good. Because, like, you know, anywhere you go in rugby, like, you want to be with the, the big boys, you know? Because in training, you have to, like, yeah. show what you have or anyone you play against, you, you want to do better than them in training or whatever you do in training, you know? Um, that, that's what I found it good there. There was mm. good vibe there. So you're there, what, three years before you got a crack? Mm. 
So three years in reserve grade, you did a fair apprenticeship, mm. and then, man, you got a debut on one of the biggest stages you could ever imagine, right? Mm. Friday night, Suncorp <laughs> Stadium against mm. the mighty Broncos. What do you remember about like being told that you're going to play and the, the lead up, everything? What, what are your memories? Um, you probably remember too, like um, how thing works. So these have a whiteboard there eh, in the change room. So every week on t- I think Tuesday, Tuesday you know who's playing first grade, you know who's playing reserve grade. Um, so we I walked in, and then uh, Daniel Anderson was the coach then. Eh? So he he goes, "Etu, go look at the board, eh? I look at the board because you know every every week I'm used to looking at you know I think seeing I, your name in the same yeah, spot same every time the, yeah every reserve grade side you know I look at reserve grade side up and down he goes oh yeah well, what do you mean what's wrong he goes look again I was like look up and down like oh because I'm looking one side yeah. I look at the reserve side and he's like. Then, like, you went, then you went, oh, I can't read, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> help me. Somebody yeah, help me. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I was going to, yeah. Um, and then I, he goes, nah, have a good look again. And I'm like, so I, then I just sort of like looked at this, to the next side, you know, like just, I don't know. Looked there, I was like, holy, what? Yeah, mate, you're playing this way. You know, and that's, that's exactly how, yeah, I was like, holy. I didn't even like, a lot of things went through my head then. Um, because I think two years before that, I was supposed to debut A, but I got hurt. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Mm. I think it's 2007 or 8. 2007, I was supposed to play, and, and uh, I don't know if it was, I was nervous, scared, or I don't know if I was, you know, things go through your head, like, I don't know, am I ready to play? Or, But um, by then, I played full time in the World Cup. I think that sort of prepared me to these sort of games, you know? like, And I played a lot of trials in first grade. And, and, and I was playing with the boys, you know what I mean? Yeah, because I, I could remember the, those three years you were playing reserve grade, you guys won the comp, mm, like mm. a couple, a few, like every, in a row, in a every row, year, yeah. yeah. So, so you were pretty ready to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I was, I was like, um, I was ready. Um, especially like uh, playing World Cup, like that's, that pretty mm. much uh, got me ready. Yeah, um, played well too. Played really well. Mm. Especially uh, his, uh, Savior, though, you see, I missed that call, eh? Who was the first person that you told when you got the news? Because um, I, I know you emotionally, because remember, you started this journey when you were 12, 11 years old, mm. 11, 12 years old back in New Zealand. Mm. And to achieve it, you could I could only imagine what was going mm. through your head at the time, you know? Mm. And there was a lot of resistance there, too. Remember, they didn't let you play. When yeah. you were in New Zealand ah. and you had to sneak off and play, stuff like that. So find a couple of days to find St George. Yeah, a couple mm. of days. So persistence. Mm. You just had that persistence. You just kept going at it. Eel. No, it was, it was a... So who, who did you tell when you found out? And I, I, I actually, I, I told my wife now. Because um, pretty much, you know, pretty much uh, what I'd done in rugby, I actually... Sh- you know, she actually followed me everywhere I go. Mm. Um, and then at the time, it was just me and her. Um, and I, yeah, I, she was the first person I actually rang. And did she cry? No, I think she says, "Are you lying? <laughs> 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 yeah, are you lying? And should we blame?" Shout out to Offa, 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 yeah, Offa, yeah. Offa the real boss, <laughs> the, real, <laughs> the real boss. Lucky, lucky she was there. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, wow. Well. Yeah. And what do you remember of the game? Because um, <laughs> through the game, you don't remember anything after, huh? Eel. It was, uh, no, there was, like, first game too, like, in Suncorp, was, like, nearly 40,000 there. Whoa. That's the first game. What an initiation. Oh, Sorry, no. mate. Br- Brisbane, Friday night. Fr- oh. Massive. Especially Massive. around that time too, mm. when they were flying. Yeah, and mm. Friday night footies, Channel 9, yeah. you know, like. And, and the good thing is, like, my first game, I, I'll never forget because it's it's the... Anzac weekend, so every game every year, I'm like, yes, that's the, you know what I mean, bring yeah, me memory, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll never forget the the day the day of the game too, because um, you know they all have the um, you know the, all the special soldiers in there, yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, man, um, that would have been an awesome, oh like, man, massive, massive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what do you remember in the game? Any any memories, moments? I 
The thing that um, still stuck with me is that every time I got the ball, I can hear the roar. Yeah. That's the thing that stuck with yeah. me um, on that game, on my first game, eh? every time I got it. And, and it actually was making good ground too, like every time I got the ball. Yeah. Um, I think the more people was there, the, it, it's just made, it made me even more excited. I was nervous, I was so scared for the game, but. Yeah. Playing on scared. adrenaline, eh? Ew, on ew. adrenaline. Not, not scared of the playing thing, you just don't know to, what to expect. Like, you're actually. Just anxious. Yeah, but then you think you, when they said, oh, you play playing easy for loud, and I'm like, she, you know how tall that guy is, man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but know? even so, you, you've got to try. On yeah. debut, yeah. Mm. How was that? Nah, there was. I think there was lucky, man, because I think uh, one of the winger didn't want to jump high. Yeah. Usually, yeah. usually I, you know, because you're a little guy, yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. a little guy. Yeah. <laughs> For a winger, you want the hiding? <laughs> 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 but you got up there pretty high for your try, huh? Yeah, yo, I think that's the last time I jump high. <laughs> <laughs> but is that the play you got concussed on? Or? Yeah, yo, yeah. So, it, so you scored a try. Scored a try. Hit your head. Mm. It was uh, it was a good game too. Like we were getting pumped. Yeah. But I was going all right. Um, I had a head clash with one of the uh, players from Brisbane. Um, yeah. Fuck. In the act of scoring, but yeah, no, no, I think it was, was it having a hit up. <laughs> no, yeah, it was, a, it was just a kick return. Oh, yeah, but I went just that and then just who can I ask who because they would have had to have the, the hardest, hardest head, man. <laughs> Are you semi tight, nah. eh, or no, nah, no, nah, it was the center, eh? the Reed, eh? Oh, yeah, Jack is it, Reed, is it him? Yeah, 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 Jack Reed. He, he didn't have a hard head, it's just my he hit my jaw. If he hit my head, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's my jaw. He hit yeah. my jaw. Eh? I think my jaw is uh, concussed. Glass. Yeah. Glass. Concuss. Glass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, well, you talked about Tonga. Yes. And you, you, you guys sort of debuted at around the same time for Tonga. Uh, I think when I was played your first before. Game? I played before. Um, say Tonga. I played um, when I was eighteen. I think for Tonga. Yeah. So I played in the World Nines. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. Para yeah. had a team. Was that in not? Sydney? Yeah. In yeah. Here. Here at, uh, SFS. 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 Yeah. West Tigers won it? Huh? West Tigers won uh, it. Oh, I, I can't yeah. remember, but um, I remember we played mainly in the quarterfinal. Because eh? yeah. Tonga, they didn't expect us to do, go, well, yeah. to, do good yeah. because mm. all the boys are from Tonga. Yeah. So, oh, really? Yeah. So me, Toyaki, yeah. was, uh, I think me, Toyaki and someone else um, that, came, that actually made it up from that side, eh? Oh no, and then um, thing, what's the halfback? Um, Nella Moa, eh? Oh yeah. Oh, rest in peace to the Tonga. Oh, did Nella play yeah, that yeah, one too? He played in the Tonga. He played for us in the Tonga side, eh? For, um, oh wow. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but we had a fresh, fresh side, eh? Tonga, <laughs> you still see the boys, eh? They, you go there, they, there's washing machine, everything there, but they wash it, they do the washing and hang it out on the windows and there, yeah. there's like talks in the bathtub, yeah, the bathtub, <laughs> in the shower, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was uh, it was good. I think that's why they nicknamed the flying Fijian because every time the uh, Fijian run the sideline, they just go flying when they come to the because it was on the wing, eh. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 the frying pan. Uh, the frying pan. The frying pan. Where's the flying pan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he asked, uh, he just asked our uh, Willie Wolfgren. Eh? He was our coach. Eh? Yeah. Asked Willie. Eh? That's, that's why get, they were named uh, the Fly Fiji. Yeah. Every time they run this side, they fly outside. <laughs> <laughs> but, sorry, sorry, all the Fijian boys, but uh, this, yeah, that, yeah, was, that was the story yeah. back in the days. Not anymore, not anymore. I retire. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Polly Podcast. Join us next week for part two of this interview. You must be like a professional flair, eh? <laughs>